and uh, welcome to Hillcrest Baptist Church. We're glad that you're here. And uh, now that that has woken all, this up, all of us up, let's all sing together from our hearts. And so if you're able to, let's stand. And uh, we're going to sing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. And uh, lift it up together on the first. Think about the words. Sing it from your heart. What a fellowship. What a joy that I've seen on the very first. What a fellowship. What a on the everlasting arms, what a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms, leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms, leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms, on the second, oh how I'll fly away, I'll fly away some glad morning when this life is over. I'll fly away, sing it out loud as we sing it on the very first. I'll fly away. We'll sing it on the first. I'll fly away. Oh, Lord, I'll fly away. Some glad morning when this life is over. with the Lord. Well, let's take a moment as the piano plays here this morning and uh, turn around, greet somebody, say hello, wave at them, maybe give a fist bump or something and uh, let them know that you're glad that they're here for the service today.
upon your area you're standing in, we're going to continue to see you. We're going to sing victory in Jesus. Think about the words as you sing the song. I heard an old, old story, a great story to sing this morning. We'll sing on the first. I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning, and I repented of my sins and won the Once again, welcome to Hillcrest Baptist Church. We welcome you to the services, and we're so glad that you can join us to worship our Savior here this morning. If you are a first-time guest with us or a second-time visiting guest, we welcome you, and uh, thank you for being here at Hillcrest. And uh, sometime during the service or at the end of the service within your bulletin, you're going to find a, a white connection card inside. If you would fill that out for us and uh, turn that into our ushers. Our ushers uh, have the lanyards on, and uh, they'll be in the corner where you received a water bottle when you came in here this morning. And so if you turn that back into them, that'd be a tremendous blessing. We'd love to keep a record of your attendance in our service here today. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to bless the service, and then we'll continue with one more song. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this morning, and Lord, we are, we're grateful today that we can have victory in our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You came and you died on the cross, and you shed your royal blood, and then, Lord, three days later, you resurrected from the grave, conquering sin and conquering death. And Lord, today we can have a, a blessed hope in our Savior. We can be forgiven of our sins, and we can have a hope for all of eternity to live with our Savior in a place called heaven. And so, Father, I pray today that if there's somebody perchance under the sound of my voice that does not know that victory, they do not know for certain that heaven would be their home, I pray today would be the day of their salvation, that today they would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And then, Father, I also pray for those that are gathered uh, that do know for certain that they are saved, that they are a Christian here today. I pray, Lord, that we would live in victory, that every single day we would walk 
in faith in the grace of our Savior, and we will live a victorious life standing upon the promises that we find in the Bible. And so, Lord, we ask that you bless the service. We pray, Father, that you bless the singing and then, of course, the preaching of thy word and use it all for your glory, and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, let's remain standing, and we're going to sing one more song before the message, Behold Our God. Who has held the oceans in his hands? Who has numbered every grain of sand? This time we're going to sing Behold Our God. Team 7 to 12 graders to dismiss after we finish singing. We'll sing Behold Our God on the very first. Who has held the oceans in his hands? Who has numbered every grain of sand? Kings and nations tremble at his if you would pause and behold our God, behold our King. He's still on the throne and he's still in control. Well, if you have your Bibles with you here this morning, turn with me to the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter number one. And uh, we're going to move away from the sermon series that we were going through before uh, the Easter season, which was through the book of Ephesians uh, entitled Alive in the Gospel. We covered the first two chapters uh, in the New Testament book of Ephesians. And uh, I've just felt led of the Lord that we would uh, transition here to a different series uh, through through several messages in the book of Joshua entitled Be Strong and Courageous. And so Joshua chapter uh, number one, we're going to look at verse number one down to verse number nine. If you do not have a, a Bible with you, then within your bulletin, you're going to find the outline to our sermon. And uh, within that outline, you're going to find the passage that we're going to read from and the many other verses that we'll be referencing uh, throughout the message. You can follow right along with the outline here this morning. And so uh, Joshua chapter number one, starting in verse number one down to verse number nine. And I'd like to bring to you a message entitled Courage Over Fear. How can we be strong and courageous over the fears and the anxieties that we have within this life? And so starting in Joshua one, verse number one, the Bible reads here, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. 
from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee, Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. I want you to notice in those first nine verses, we find that phrase, that encouragement three times from the Lord as he is trying to edify his servant Joshua. He says, be strong and of a good courage. If you have a copy of the scriptures there in front of you, I want you to notice with me the final verse, uh, verse number nine. And I know uh, we're not gathered in person, and so we can't really hear one another. But but I, I want to encourage you right now. I want to read that verse one more time. And uh, as I read it, would you read it to yourself? Uh, would you look there into verse nine? And would you read it to yourself as I read that? And then we'll pray, and then we'll get right into the message. It says there once again, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this morning. I'm so grateful for that promise that we just read, that, that you are with us. You've told us continuously throughout the scriptures that you would never leave us, you'll never forsake us. That, Father, your presence is always real. On top of that, you've told us within the Bible that you will fight for us, that the battle is the Lord's, that, that you are the one that gives the victory. And so, Lord, all we have to do is trust, and all we have to do is obey, and we need to continue following the teachings that we find in the Word of God, and, and every step of the way, you've promised that you would give us the victory. And so, Father, I pray as we think about these truths within these first nine verses of Joshua chapter number one. I pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you would take away all the distractions that we might have from our physical surroundings, the distractions that we might have with the thoughts that are ruminating within our minds. And then, Lord, I pray that you'd help us to focus right here on the truths that we find within the Bible. And Lord, if there's any fear that we're struggling with this morning, if there's anxiety, worries, uncertainties that are causing us to be paralyzed in our Christian life. I pray this morning that we would find the solution within the Bible and by thy grace and through thy spirit, help us to overcome and help us to press forward by faith and continue in the will of God to bring you glory and to bring you honor. And so Lord, we ask that you bless this hour and bless this time of preaching and we'll thank you for it. In Jesus name we pray, amen. You may be seated. As we think about the subject of fear here this morning, we, give, we begin by having an understanding of what fear is. You see, fear is a distressing emotion aroused by uncertainty, insecurity, and impending danger, evil, or pain. Now, when it comes to fear, it is important for each and every single one of us to realize that the emotion of fear does not come from God. The emotion of fear does not originate with the Lord. For the Bible teaches us in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse number 7, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. And so fear does not originate with the Lord. God does not give us a spirit of fear. But the Bible teaches us here this morning that the spirit of fear uh, entered into the heart of man as a direct result 
of Adam and Eve's disobedience and their sin. Uh, we think about Genesis chapter number 3 as we think about the fall of mankind, as we think about the sin of Adam and Eve. And the Bible says there, after that he had taken uh, of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, it says, And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden. Uh, here's the Lord coming out seeking after Adam. Of course, the Lord is omniscient. He knew exactly where Adam and Eve were, but, but he asks them this probing question concerning where they are at. And, and we find here the response from Adam, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And so we find there for the very first time after sin had entered into the heart of man, man began to experience the emotion of guilt. Uh, man began to experience the emotion of shame for the very first time, and man began to experience the emotion of fear. He says, I was afraid. And so we find here that fear does not originate with the Lord, but it originates with sin. And ever since that day in the Garden of Eden with the entrance of sin, the devil has constantly tried to paralyze us and deceive us with his lies to cause the emotion of fear within our hearts. Uh, I think about a story that took place back in 2013. There was a zoo uh, in an Asian country that wasn't doing very well. They were not attracting a lot of visitors to their zoo, and so they were desperate for a new attraction to draw visitors, but unable to afford and purchase the animals that people wanted to view, uh, they were left with a predicament. Uh, they wanted to go out there and purchase a lion. They knew that that would draw visitors, but they had no money, they could not afford it. And so they came up with a plan and they purchased a large Tibetan mastiff and had it groomed to look somewhat like a lion. They attempted to pass this dog off as the king of the jungle, and then they promoted that we have a lion within our zoo. Sure enough, it created a stir, and people started getting excited about it. And on that first day, there was a, a flood of new visitors that came in to that zoo. All of them rushed over to that, uh, to that attraction where the supposed lion uh, was located. But very soon, they were all disappointed, and they began to complain to the authorities and to the folks there within the zoo when they heard the lion barking instead of roaring because it was simply a dog and not a lion. And as I think about that story here this morning, fear is kind of like that. And that's how the devil uses fear within our lives. It's a lie. It is, it is rooted in a lie. It is not rooted in the truth of God's word. And the devil tries to deceive us that our problems are bigger than they actually are and that our situations are hopeless, leaving us paralyzed within our fear. But you see here the truth that we find within the scriptures is that there is no problem and there is no situation that cannot be overcome with the Lord, for God is almighty and nothing is impossible with God. In Jeremiah 32, verse number 17, the Bible says, O Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. In Mark 10, 27, it says, And Jesus, looking upon them, saith, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. And so we find throughout the Scriptures that with the Lord we can overcome every fear and we can live a life of victory in faith in our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so today, as we study these nine verses in Joshua chapter Number one, I want you to notice with me some principles on how we might fight fear and how we might overcome fear that we would live a life of victory, a life of faith in our God. First of all, I want you to notice with me, I find here the causes of fear. Notice the causes of fear as we look at these opening verses. In verse one, down to the first portion of verse number two, I find here that there is the death of Moses, or, or the death of a mentor, the death of the leader. 
It says here, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. You see, for 40 years now, Moses had been the leader for the people of Israel. He delivered them from the bondage of Egypt. Uh, he was the one that walked into the palace of Pharaoh and he confronted him and he, he brought down the ten plagues uh, from the Lord. He's the one that led them through the Red Sea and also throughout the wilderness. He's the one that received and instituted God's laws amongst the people. He's the one that interceded on behalf of the people of God before the Lord. And now we find here in Joshua chapter number one, on the very brink of entering into the promised land, the Bible teaches us that Moses had died. And so now the mantle of leadership rests on the shoulders of Joshua and on the shoulders of Joshua alone. And so we find here this was a grave responsibility. You see, Joshua wasn't simply just leading his family. Uh, he wasn't simply leading a small company or even uh, a company of, 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 of soldiers of a military army, but rather we find here that Joshua was given the responsibility to lead the people of God, to lead the entire nation of Israel. This group that was gathered out here in the wilderness, getting ready to enter into the promised land, was not a small group, but a rather large group, a great multitude according to the scriptures. In Numbers 26, just a little while before Israel would cross the Jordan River, Moses takes a census of how many people there are that are 20 years and upward who are able to fight as men of war. And within that chapter, we find that they came up with a total of 601,730 men that were 20 years old and upward prepared to go into battle and prepared to have a war. Now it would be very conservative to assume that one out of every four Israelites would meet these requirements and be a man of war with at least 20 years of age. And therefore the people of Israel, uh, the multitude that was gathered there under the leadership of Joshua would have been, and this is a conservative estimate, it would have been at least 2.4 million people that Joshua was now responsible for. And so this was a large group of people that Joshua now had to lead. And so overnight, if you could imagine this picture, Moses, who was the leader, uh, Moses, the one that delivered them out of uh, Pharaoh's bondage, Moses, the one that led them through that Red Sea, Moses, the one that uh, that that, uh, that that prayed to the Lord and, and had manna fall on the ground and had the ravens fall, Moses, the one that provided water for them in the wilderness, Moses, the one that had guided them throughout the wilderness, the one who had received the laws on top of Mount Sinai, Moses, the leader of the people of God, had now passed away from the scene. He had died, and now all of that leadership rests on the shoulders of of Joshua. And so you could imagine how overwhelmed Joshua might be. And you see, oftentimes in our lives, when there are transitions or a change in our role or an increase in our responsibility, we tend to get fearful. Uh, we tend to be filled with anxiety and we tend to become insecure within our hearts. Maybe it's a new job for a new business venture. Uh, maybe it's a new position of ministry. Maybe it's a, a new location. And during this season, God has you uh, relocating to a different place. Maybe it's a new responsibility in life. Maybe your family is expanding. Maybe you're becoming a father or, or a mother for the very first time. I remember when my wife was pregnant with our first child, Noah. We were so excited to have a child, to have a little one that we could love and, and teach and raise up and, and nurture in the admonition of the Lord. We were so excited that God had given us a child. But then after a few days, the excitement for myself at least began to fade and reality set in and I started becoming very fearful. And I remember in the mornings as I read my Bible being overwhelmed with anxiety, thinking about the responsibility that now 
I had to take care of another human being. I had to make sure that, that this little child would be fed. And I remember being filled with fear within my heart and having insecurity about the prospect of becoming a father. I had never been a father before. Uh, no one had, had, had helped me to have uh, maybe practice in raising a child within my life. This was all brand new territory for me, and therefore I was filled with fear within my heart. And here Joshua was about to take on the greatest responsibility of his life, to lead the people of God, to carry on the leadership of Moses. Now he was responsible for at least 2.4 million people. And so we find here, first of all, the cause of fear in Joshua's life was the death of Moses. But then I want you to notice, not only was it the death of Moses, but we find here also it was because there was a difficult mission. And notice what we find here in the ensuing verses. First of all, in verse number two, we read there, Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people. Uh, notice, as we think about this difficult mission, he had to first cross the Jordan. On average, the width of the riverbed here of the Jordan River is about 98 feet. But during flood times, the river can swell in some areas to a width of half a mile over two thousand feet wide and in Joshua chapter 4 verse number 15 this is what the Bible teaches us and as they that bear the ark were come unto Jordan and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water and then we have a parenthetical it says for Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of harvest and so this was the season when the jordan river was overflowing and so now here's the first task that joshua is given you are responsible to lead 2.4 million people across the jordan river which regularly is about 100 feet wide but now during the season when it overflow with it can be as much as 2,000 feet wide and so we find here a difficult mission. And keep in mind, Moses did not know at this point at least that God would split the Jordan River. And so he was not privy to that knowledge. And so here's the first command, the first mission that he's given. Take the people of God and cross the Jordan River. But then I want you to notice, not only did he have a difficult mission in crossing the Jordan, but he also had a difficult mission in that he was to conquer the land. And it says there in verse number two, as it continues, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your coast. You see, God had given them the land, but the inhabitants of that land would not freely hand it over to the Israelites. You see, Joshua had received the promise. The people of God knew that uh, God had arranged that this would be their land. But you see, the people that were inhabiting the land, the kingdoms, the towns, the cities, the empires, uh, they were not willing to simply step aside and say, okay, Joshua, okay, Israelites, you take over and now you inhabit our land. And so there would have been impending battles. Uh, there would have been the sacrificing of lives. Furthermore, we find here that the Israelites were not trained in battle. Uh, this was not a skilled military army. They had spent 400 years in captivity in Egypt as slaves and now they spent for, uh, they spent another 40 years wandering throughout the wilderness and so this was not a prepared people to enter into the promised land and to conquer the kingdoms that existed over the Jordan and so we find here a difficult mission if not an impossible mission that was given to Joshua in Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse number 1 the Bible says hero Israel Thou art to pass over Jordan this day to go in to possess nations greater and mightier than thyself, cities great and fenced up to heaven. I think about just their uh, first battle, the first city that they were supposed to overtake, and that was the city of Jericho. According to excavations, Jericho was heavily fortified and, and virtually impenetrable. The city was surrounded 
uh, by an earthen embankment, an earthen rampart. And at the bottom, there was a stone retaining wall uh, that was about 12 to 15 feet high. And then on top of that retaining wall, there was a mud brick wall, which is known as the outer or the lower wall. And that was about six feet thick and about another 10 feet high. And so the very first wall that they would have encountered would have been about 20 to 26 feet high. And then there was an earthen embankment that uh, elevated towards the city. And then at the crest of that hill, there was another similar mud brick wall, which is known as the inner upper wall. And that was about another 10 feet high. And so the total height would have been at least about 46 feet above ground level that the Israelites needed to overcome to simply enter into the city of Jericho. Of course, all of us know the story that they walked around the walls of Jericho and on the final day they walked around seven times and as they completed 13 rounds around the city, they, they shouted and we know that the Lord miraculously allowed those walls to crumble. But I simply give you this illustration here this morning to help us to understand that this was the first city of dozens of cities that Joshua and the people of God needed to conquer and expel out of that land. And so this was a monumental task. Uh, this was a difficult mission that caused fear and uncertainty in the heart of Joshua. And maybe this morning there's a difficult task within our lives. Maybe it's something that's awaiting us in our future. I don't know what it might be, but it might seem impossible. It might seem intimidating and scary. Everything seems to point towards failure, and maybe your heart is filled with doubt, and you're thinking to yourself, I'm not enough. Uh, I'm not smart enough. I'm not strong enough. I don't know if I can be successful in this new chapter of my life. And you might be enveloped with fear as we find here in Joshua chapter number one. But I want to encourage you, according to the Bible, in Joshua 1, 7, God encourages Joshua and each and every single one of us. He says, be strong and be of a good courage. And so first of all, we find here the causes of fear. There was the death of Moses. There was the difficult mission. Everything rested on the shoulders of Joshua. And now Joshua was on the side of the Jordan River, and the task ahead of him seemed impossible. And therefore, God encouraged him, be strong and of a good courage. And so first of all, the causes of fear. But secondly, I want you to notice with me then the combating of fear. How do we fight fear? And how did Joshua combat fear according to the teachings of God? First of all, uh, as we think about the combating of fear, we must remember the presence of God. In Joshua 1, 5, the Bible says, There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. And we find here the greatest comfort known to man and the greatest uh, truth that brings peace within our hearts. And that is that we can experience the presence of God, that God will not leave us and God will not forsake us. Somebody has said peace is not found in the absence of problems, but it is found in the presence of God. I think about the psalmist David in Psalms 23, verse number four. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And I think about the testimony of David Livingston. He was a great missionary to the heart of the continent of Africa. And on one evening, David Livingston was surrounded by hostile, angry tribes that, uh, that were ready to attack him and his family. And he was strongly tempted to flee. Uh, he was strongly tempted to run away. But then that evening, as he was reading the Word of God, he came to Matthew chapter 28, verse number 19 and 20, where the Bible uh, reads there, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. And then at the end of verse 20, there is the promise, And lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world. And that night he wrote in his journal, It is the word of a gentleman of the most strict and sacred honor. So there's an end of it. I will not cross furtively tonight as I intended. I feel quite calm now. Thank God. 
years later when he was receiving an honorary doctorate from the University of Glasgow, he said these words as he received that honor. He said, would you like me to tell you what supported me through all the years of exile among people whose language I could not understand and whose attitude towards me was always uncertain and often hostile? It was this, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. On those words, I staked everything, and they never failed. And I want to encourage each and every single one of us here this morning, I don't know what battle you're facing. Uh, I don't know what type of fear is enveloping your heart. I don't know what type of anxiety causes you to wake up at late at night or wake up early in the morning and causes you to be paralyzed in your Christian faith. But let me encourage you this morning concerning the truth that we find in the Bible that God is with you, that his presence abides with you if you are a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as he have for he has said i will never leave thee nor forsake thee and you see here today we're not speaking about the president of the united states uh, we're not speaking about a king of some type of foreign land we're not talking uh, about a five-star military general we're not talking about a ceo of a multi billion dollar corporation but we're speaking here this morning about the god of heaven we're speaking here this morning about the creator of all the universe the perfect the holy god the all-powerful omnipotent god the all-knowing omniscient god the ever-present god the self-existent one yahweh who has no beginning and who has no end and it is he that says to you and it is he that says to me here this morning you might be a little bit fearful you might be entering some uncharted territory but have courage in your heart for I will never leave you and I will never forsake you and what a wonderful truth that is and what a wonderful comfort that is that gives us peace and rest in our hearts that no matter what the obstacles might be my God is with me the creator of all the universe abides within me he walks with me and he stands with me I think about Shadrach Meshach and Abednego as young as young men they were i'm sure filled with anxiety and fear in their hearts as nebuchadnezzar threw them into that fiery furnace uh, that was elevated seven times in its heat but we love that story for the bible teaches us that right in the midst of that furnace there was a fourth whose image was like that of the son of god and god stood with them in the midst of that fire and let me encourage you here today, when you face an uncertainty within your life, when you face a responsibility or a task that is beyond your ability, when you face uh, some type of job that, that overwhelms you and paralyzes you in fear, when you face the attack of enemies and critics within your life, it is Almighty Jehovah God who promises, I will be with you. When Moses was afraid, to face Pharaoh, I mean, who wouldn't be afraid? Pharaoh was the most powerful man in the most powerful kingdom in the entire world at that time. And Moses was tasked to go in and to confront Pharaoh, and he was afraid. And God encouraged Moses by telling him, I am with you. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 11, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, God said, Certainly, I will be with thee. When Zerubbabel and Joshua and the people of Israel were being discouraged and, and they were fearful in rebuilding the work of the temple, God said to them, I am with you. In Haggai chapter 2, verse 4, Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am am with you saith the lord of hosts according to the word that i covenanted with you when he came out of egypt so my spirit remaineth among you fear ye not and then i think about the disciples that were given the great commission to go into all the world fishermen uneducated men they were sent out throughout the world to preach the gospel of the lord jesus christ and they would have been filled with fear being uh, being humans being flesh but we find there the encouragement from our savior i am with you always even unto the end of the world amen
And so we find here, first of all, the combating of fear is to recognize and remember the presence of God, that God is with you, that God will never leave you, and he will never forsake you. But then notice also, we must remember the promises of God. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 6, he says, Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, and notice these final words, which I swear, or which I promise unto their fathers to give them. And you see, when we come face to face with panic and anxiety in this life, it is not time to cower in fear and to be controlled by our emotions, but it's time to stand on the promises of God and be led by faith. To walk by faith and not by our feelings. You see, what makes a difference between great Christians that do great exploits for the Lord and those who live an average, mediocre life is that those that there are some who allow their emotions to be the leader. They allow their feelings to go first and then their faith follows. But those who do great things for the Lord Jesus Christ, they allow their faith to lead. And they might not have the feelings and the emotions quite yet. They don't have it all figured out, but they believe this is what God wants me to do. And they step out by faith and eventually the feelings and the emotions follow. The majority of Christians live by their feelings, but there are few that do great things for the Lord that live by their faith, despite feelings and in spite of their emotions. I love the song, Standing on the Promises, specifically stanza number two. It says, standing on the promises that cannot fail. When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail, by the living word of God I shall prevail, standing on the promises of God. According to one study, there are approximately 8,810 promises in the entire Bible, 7,706 in the Old Testament, 1,104 in the New Testament. There's a promise for every problem that we face within this life. And I wonder here this morning, are you studying these promises? Are you memorizing these promises? Are you claiming them and living by faith to combat the fears within your life? You see, fear is originated in sin. Fear is originated from a lie that comes from the devil and the world and from our flesh. And the only way that we can combat that fear is with truth. And that truth is found in the promises of the Word of God. The Bible promises to provide for our needs. Maybe you have a fear concerning the provisions within this life and the scriptures promise, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Philippians 419. God also promises to give us wisdom when we lack understanding and direction. James 1 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. In Psalms 32, verse number 8, God promises that he will give us guidance during our seasons of confusion. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye in romans 8 28 the bible promises that god uses our struggles and our trials and even the evil situations that we face in this life that he is more powerful than all of that and he uses it for good and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them who are called according to his purpose in philippians chapter 4 13 god promises that he will give you strength when you feel weak that he will give you power when you are weary i can do all things through christ which strengtheneth me and then in philippians chapter 4 verse 6 through 7 god promises that he will give us peace in times of anxiety be careful for nothing, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God that passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We find here in the Bible promise after promise, promise that combats the fears that we have in this life, a fear that we uh, that, that, that we might not know which direction to take. Uh, fear concerning a task that is overwhelming. Fear concerning a trial. Fear concerning death. God has a promise to combat every fear 
within our lives. Warren Wiersbe said God didn't give Joshua explanations as to how he would accomplish these things because God's people live on promises and not on explanations. And so we find here in Joshua chapter number one, the causes of fear, the death of Moses, a difficult mission. But then we find the combating of fear. We must remember the presence of God and we must remember the promises of God that we find throughout the scriptures. And then finally, I want you to notice with me here this morning, I find the conquering of fear, the conquering of fear. Now understand here today that we will never fully eradicate the emotion of fear within this life for we have a flesh. Uh, we, we do not have a glorified body as long as we walk on this earth, but we can walk so closely with the Lord and we can be so filled with God's spirit that whenever fear arises, we do not linger in fear and become paralyzed, but we can quickly overcome and conquer fear through faith. And I want to give you two thoughts really quickly as we close the, close the message here this morning. First of all, we must go by faith. And this is so important. We must go by faith. In Joshua 1, 7, it says, Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses my servant commanded thee, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. God's command to Joshua was not to simply know God's presence and to know God's promises, but then it was to have faith and to act upon these truths in observing to do what the scriptures taught. It was not enough that Joshua knew about the presence of God. It was not enough that Joshua knew about the promises of God. But now Joshua had to place his faith in those promises and he had to act upon those promises by faith. I think about a lot of different fears within this life and, and I think about this list of strange phobias uh, first of all, I think about exanthophobia. That is the fear of the color yellow. Maybe some of you have that fear. I don't know. Uh, I think about the fear of turophobia. It is the fear of cheese. Maybe some of you have that fear. I think about somniphobia. It is the fear of falling asleep. I think about ombrophobia. It is the fear of rain. And then I think about my daughter here this morning and and my daughter has what is known as Velox rotophobia. Velox rotophobia. Some of you might be wondering what in the world is Velox rotophobia? Well, a simpler name for that fear is called coaster phobia, and it is the fear of roller coasters. And maybe some of you have that fear that whenever you see a roller coaster and you see it doing it the, the loop-de-loop and, and the speed of how it comes down, uh, maybe you start getting fearful and your heart is filled with anxiety. Well, my daughter has that fear. And I remember just recently we had the privilege to uh, travel over to an amusement park and we stood in front of a roller coaster and I could see just the look on my daughter's face. Uh, we were there gathered together. I was encouraging them. We're all going to ride this. It's going to be great and we're going to have a fun time. And, and I noticed on her face, she was just pale. She had no emotions. You know, Natalie, how are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. I mean, that, that's pretty much all she could say. She was completely a stone faced the entire time. And, and, and as we were going through that line, which was about 45 minutes, I was constantly encouraging her with my promises. I told her, Natalie, uh, you're going to be okay. Uh, Natalie, it's not that bad. Natalie, you're not going to die. Natalie, uh, I'm going to be sitting right here with you the entire time. And I was trying to encourage her uh, throughout the time that we were waiting within that line. And although those promises that I made to her were true, uh, it did not help her to overcome her fear of veloxrotophobia by simply knowing those promises. But eventually, she needed to take the step of faith and the step of courage and to get on that roller coaster and to ride that ride. And sure enough, she did. Reluctantly, she did. Shaking in her shoes, she did. 
and she rode that roller coaster and it lasted for about a minute and went up and down and it did some twists uh, twists and, and uh, some turns and finally she got off of that. She was still kind of shaking. I heard her screaming throughout the entire ride and I looked over at Natalie and I asked her, Natalie, how was it? And she looked right back at me and she said, Daddy, she said, that was fun. Let's do it again. And sure enough, just a few moments later, we got back into that line and we rode that roller coaster again. And she overcame her fear of coaster phobia. It wasn't just the knowledge that helped her, but she stepped out by faith and she confronted that fear. And likewise, within our lives, we must take the promises of God and then we must implement them. We can't just know them and memorize them, but then we must implement them and we must act upon those promises and live by faith. And when we do, God will help us to conquer our fears. And so we must go by faith. And then finally, we must grow in our faith. It says in verse 8 and 9, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. And God basically says to Joshua, if you will meditate on my promises, and if you will live according to them, you will be successful, you will prosper, and you will be strong and courageous, and you will overcome fear. And to conquer our fear over and over again, we must grow in our faith. Our faith needs to grow as we grow in the Word of God. I think about what D.L. Moody said. He said, I prayed for faith, and it did not come. But when I read the word of God, then faith came. In Romans 10, 17, it says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. How do we continuously conquer our fears? It's by growing in faith. How do we grow in faith? It's by spending time in the word of God. It's constantly learning, reminding, memorizing, and then implementing the promises that we find within the Word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And so we find the causes of fear, the combating of fear, and then the conquering of fear within our lives. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for this time that you've given us. And Lord, maybe there's some within this parking lot, and they're facing a fear. Maybe their heart is filled with anxiety. Maybe it has to do with their workplace. Maybe it has to do with their children. Maybe it has to do with their health, a loved one. I don't know what it might be. But Lord, I pray this morning that you help us to remember and then claim and then act upon these promises that we find in the Word of God, that God, you are with us, that your presence abides in us, that you'll never leave us and forsake us. Help us to remember that wonderful truth. And then, Father, help us to claim the promises throughout the scriptures that we might combat the fear, uh, the specific worry that we are facing within our lives. And then, Lord, help us to grow in faith. Help us to act on faith, to live by faith, to walk by faith, and continually grow in faith through the Word of God. Father, I pray that you'd help us and encourage us and strengthen us here this morning. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to leave this place uh, victoriously, trusting and standing upon the promises that we find in the Word of God. With your heads bowed and eyes closed just for a moment as the piano plays here today, this is the time of our invitation and a time that we'd like to ask you a few questions as you think about the message, as you reflect and respond to the Holy Spirit of God. I wonder this morning, is there a fear in your life that is paralyzing you? Is there a worry in your life that is hindering you, that is stopping you from moving forward by faith in your Christian life. We must realize, first of all, that that fear is rooted in a lie. It's rooted in deception from the wicked one. And we must combat that fear with truth. That we're on the winning side. That God is with us and that God will fight for us, and God will take care of us. And so maybe here this morning, 
you needed that reminder concerning the presence of God, concerning the promises of God. And I want to encourage you here today, if God has spoken to your heart, claim that promise, implement it in your life, and live by faith. Don't live by fear. Don't live by feelings. Live by faith. And as you do, and as you grow in the Word of God, God will help you to conquer and overcome fear and to live victoriously for the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe there's somebody here this morning and you're not certain that you have everlasting life. Maybe your fear is death. The Bible teaches us that God has conquered death, that Jesus Christ in his, in his crucifixion, burial, and resurrection, he has conquered the grave and he has conquered sin. And he's made a way for each and every single one of us that we too can conquer death and conquer sin that we might live forever in a place called heaven with the Lord. I wonder here this morning, if you're to die today, are you 100% sure that heaven's your home? If you're not certain about that, I want you to know that God loves you and Jesus wants to save you and forgive you of your sins. You say, Pastor, I'm not certain heaven's my home. I'm not sure if I have everlasting life, but I sure would like to know if that's you here this morning, I encourage you that right after this service is over, that you'd come right up to this truck. I'd love to take a moment and take the Bible and show you from the scriptures how you can know for certain, how you can have that peace and that victory that you have everlasting life, that you don't have to fear death, that you have a home in a place called hell. If that's you and you're in this parking lot, I encourage you to come as soon as the service is over. If you're watching via our live stream, I encourage you to email us, text message us, let us know. We'd love to show you from the scriptures how you can know for certain heaven to Let's take a moment this morning as the piano continues to play. And let's pray and seek the Lord. If God has spoken to your heart, let's do that right now. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this morning and thank you for the promises that we studied here today as we think about thy presence, as we think about your power, as we think about uh, the many different numerous promises that you've given us within the word of God. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to stand upon those promises and help us to live by faith and not to live by fear, not to live by our feelings. Father, I pray for those today that are maybe struggling what they fear or some type of worry within their life. I pray that this message was a help to them. And I pray, Lord, that as they leave this parking lot in just a few moments, that Holy Spirit of God, that you would strengthen them and that you'd help them to live victoriously in our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for this morning and thank you for this time that you've given us to worship you. We pray now that you would bless as we conclude this service. And then, Lord, that you'd watch over us as we go our separate ways. Father, we love you, and we thank you once again for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us here this morning uh, for our Sunday service. And I pray that something that was uh, said was an encouragement uh, and a blessing to you. If I can help, if I can pray for you about anything, please do not hesitate to... Uh, to reach out to me or to or to see me after the service. I love to pray with you. I'd love to be a blessing in whatever way uh, that I can. I just want to give you a few announcements before we dismiss. And uh, first of all, this week we resume our midweek Bible study, our life group ministry. And uh, that starts back up this week. This is uh, track number two, which is the second quarter uh, of the year. And we're doing something just a little bit different uh, this time around. And so uh, for this quarter and for this quarter alone, alone, uh, we are now transitioning from our Zoom Bible studies 
and we are combining for the next seven weeks uh, one midweek Bible study life group, and it's going to be in person over at the Fairfield uh, Inn and Suites Marriott in Norco. And so it's going to be every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, I'll be teaching through a lesson every single evening that we gather together. And so it's going to be combined in person all together one life group, one midweek Bible study over at the Fairfield Inn and Suites. If you have any questions about that, please uh, come and see me or Nathan or my wife, and uh, we love to answer any questions uh, concerning the life group. Uh, we also do have on Wednesday evening child care, and uh, we are going to have a children's class as well. And so you can bring your little ones, and uh, we're going to have a division of the conference rooms there. And one side will have the adult Bible study, and then on the other side we're going to have a children's class and, uh, and child care in that section. And so that begins this Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, Fairfield Inn and in Suites. If you need more information, uh, you can find our website or you can uh, come ask us after the service. And then for the men, we have our men's breakfast coming up. That's going to be this Saturday, and uh, that's at 9.30 in the morning. It's going to be over at Saul Ramirez's house. If you go to the website, visit hillcrest.org slash men's breakfast. Uh, you can find the location, the information. You can register there as well. Everything is complimentary. We're going to have a great time, uh, a great challenge from God's Word and then fellowship, uh, and then food together. And so this Saturday, men's breakfast at 9.30. And then we have Mother Sunday on May the 9th, and so please mark your calendar on that and uh, pray that the Lord would uh, bless that day in a tremendous uh, in a tremendous fashion. And, and, and then we have several other things coming up here in the month of May and uh, a few exciting things that we'd like to announce to you, and we'll do that as we draw closer to that time. And so uh, once again, mark your calendars, be in prayer. Uh, life group this Wednesday night all together combined 7 o'clock uh, and then our men's breakfast this Saturday. Well, as we close, let's uh, close with the final song. We're going to sing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. If you're able to, let's stand together. Let's stretch out just a little bit. And uh, the first stanza, what a fellowship, what a joy divine. And we'll be dismissed with our service here today. What a fellowship on the first. What a fellowship, what a joy divine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Amen. God bless you. You are dismissed.